right, what's up, boys and girls? Troy here. We are looking at the shock collar at Quad Standard Labs. Uh, if you're seeing this or you're getting yours and you scan the video um, QR code, you're here to kind of get a quick walkthrough and an understanding uh, of the build, uh, how to use it, a little bit of the battery, flight time, stuff like that, just things you need to know about operating it, uh, and really just get that introduction. Um, so first of all, the shock collar being a five inch cage drone, um, it is able to fly something like a GoPro pretty easily. Um, however, this one's set up for a Cinelifter flight. Um, what we recommend as far as payload um, with this build <clears throat> is gonna be really variable dependent on um, what battery and camera you wanna fly. So that's really gonna be the main focus that we're gonna talk about. But before we get to that, I'm gonna walk you around show you just some key things to know about um, your build. <clears throat> so um, DAC universal mount is installed. Uh, it's usually going to be already in the most forward position. Um, these first units are going to come with a, this plate mainly, um, which does not really allow you to shift the camera too far forward. This is something we want to change. Um, we've actually already made the revisions. Um, however, we're waiting on some hardware to arrive to make this work. Uh, but basically, the idea being that we want to be able to shift the camera weight as far forward as possible at times, dependent on the weight of the camera. Um, for now, there's only two positions, and it's actually going to be in the forward position. Um, again, over time, these may change, and the one you get may be different than what you're looking at here. It may end up having this plate or some other variation. Um, for now, though, um, these plates will work. Uh, they are going to mean that there's a little more um, center of gravity and a little more adjusting and, and balance needed to keep everything nice and, and clean, um, but still plenty doable with this setup. Um, again, going forward in the future builds, you're going to see a different clean plate. Uh, so the DAC mount uh, is adjustable by loosening a, a screw on each side, and when you do, you can move the, the mount up and down into different angles. There's already some angle um, laser engravings, so you see which angle you're at, and you're going to adjust the camera. Um, the camera is sitting on silicone dampeners. You can switch those out for alpha gel if you feel like you need to switch it for something else. Uh, we find the silicone dampeners do work plenty, just fine. Um, here in the back, if you have 12 volt power coming off of yours, uh, it is an option to add uh, to some builds. So if you wanted 12 volt power coming out, we have a VEC here. It's got an XT30. Uh, you can go ahead and build a power cable for your camera that plugs right in. Um, just use another XT30 and we'll try to include those XT30s in the package when you get it. On the back over here, uh, we see a battery strap. This is one of the battery positions you can use. Um, it's also a great handle if you're just carrying it around uh, with maybe a battery on the bottom which is gonna be the secondary position. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we do have Bullnose Doll 5045s on here. After a lot of testing with a lot of props, these are really just the ones we really preferred. They gave us the best sound, lowest kind of pitch of sound, especially indoors, while also being as less flexible and kind of vibration prone as some of the other props and materials. Um, you can try other props, but just know that when you get it, it's probably going to be tested and tuned on these. Not that other props may cause too many problems, but the biggest thing you want to look for is that extra weight of props or just a change that may cause a little additional change in the motor heat. Um, so props that we ship with are pretty much the props that we recommend you use. Uh, there shouldn't be an issue, though, because you really shouldn't damage these props in very many you know, situations that I can think of. Um, so that's going to be that. Uh, we do have a USB port here on the back end with the XT90, which is going to be on the Cinelifter builds. Um, so USB port, plug right in, it connects to the flight controller, you're in, you're ready to set up your, your beta flight. Um, on one side, you're going to see a uh, balance lead holder, and that's going to fit a 6S balance lead, and that's for the battery that's going to be sitting on the back to have battery lead kind of plugged in and out of the way. On shorter batteries like this, you may be able to go ahead and get away with it in the strap and it's probably better. When you get to using a longer battery, <clears throat> you may want that because it may help you keep it out of the way without being able to, you know, have to worry about it under the strap. But definitely always watch your balance leads, watch your wire cable management. 
Um, so this is for mounting a battery across the back. And again, we'll talk about that difference here shortly. Uh, just want to give you another quick walk around and let you see everything. So uh, true RC antennas uh, coming out the center here. There is mounts in the rear sometimes, possibly, at least these first builds we did. Uh, we did that to leave the option there. It's not easy to add this mount. So we figured we could add it in the beginning, have it there. And if you ever need to move the antennas, you could. Um, that being said, to move the antennas, you would have to change the SMA um, connector to a longer uh, connector because it won't reach where the air unit is currently housed. Um, but you could move them to the rear. We did them here because we actually found that this gives us literally the best all around um, reception for the DJI air unit. So uh, I do recommend keeping the DJI um, antennas mounted here. On the analog builds, if we do one, um, we're going to have it coming out the rear. That's just because on this situation, uh, it, it allowed for it and the mount's fine. You could move it though over to one side or the other. To me, that would be a little bit weird uh, because then you'd be biased to one side of the camera that's mounted. So in this situation, you have antennas on both because you have two antennas. Um, so that's gonna be the general walk around there. On the bottom, um, there is again a battery strap holes here. Um, if I was going to use a bottom, a bottom battery, which there will be a reason to, I would actually probably just run the strap straight underneath and straight out. Um, the reason why is, is these batteries are pretty big, and if you're running a bottom battery, it's because typically it's a pretty big battery too. Um, and this center, putting it through the center is just such a pain that you know it's not even going to fit the whole battery in between the straps really. So just go ahead and loop it through. Make sure you don't hit anything or catch any other wires, but everything should be kind of out of the way. Um, this does also talk, or this is also where if you have a um, crossfire and you need to bind to it, and because that crossfire is going to be a receiver, um, it may be just hanging out right here in this general area. You can take this bottom plate off if you want to to get in there and push the button. However, it's free floating for a reason. Um, there's no reason to tie it down anywhere and make it to where in an impact it gets snagged or pulled. It's just going to hang out in there loose. So you should be able to kind of move it around in there and kind of get it slipped out or slipped into an area where there's a cutout. And you should be able to access the bind button pretty quickly. Um, Crossfire also, we will try to remember to just reset it to where you can first try to just bind to it. Um, that, that could work right out the box if we reset it here. Um, it's something we try to always do. So that's going to be this one. Um, now, as far as, oh, as far as getting into this build, um, if you needed to get into it quickly and just access stuff inside, it's actually going to be these bottom screws that are the eight top plate or bottom plate in this case screws. Take those out and you'll be able to get in there and really see everything and, and access stuff if you need to. But again, there's really no reason to. You should be good to go. Um, the air unit, you should be able to access the bind button right here. It's going to be on the side of the air unit in the front. So now that we've got kind of a walkthrough taken care of, I wanted to talk about um, cameras and batteries. This platform could fly, I would say it can fly at least 13 to 1400 grams, definitely. Um, the problem with trying to fly more than about 13, 1400 grams in camera payload is that you need a battery that has to go with it. And as you increase the camera payload, you're going to have to decrease the size of the battery. And so we don't really have a recommended battery size because everybody's going to be flying different cameras. So the box camera is really great. The BGH one is even better because it's like 600 grams, 700 grams with a lens with no battery. And you can power it here on the drone, which means that it's sub 1000 grams and it's a great payload to fly. Um, with that payload uh, under 1000 grams, you could definitely fly the 2200 and possibly the 3000 milliamp batteries. So the 3000 milliamp, if I'm going to fly it, I want to fly it center mounted on the bottom. And this is to try to keep, again, the center of mass and the center of gravity um, all in the same center of the aircraft and not heavily biased towards the rear in any way. Um, if we put the battery and it's a big battery and we mount it across the back here, 
The problem becomes that we can't really get the camera weight too far forward before it becomes a tipping point that it kind of makes everything not fly very well. Um, and in doing so, we're adding a bunch of weight right above the rear motors. And when it tries to stay at a good pitch, it's going to be constantly fighting that extra weight right on top of it. So what we want to do there is, is to carry the extra weight if we want to use something that's over 1,200 grams, 1,300 grams, and we want to use a big battery. We want to move the battery to the bottom, and we want to make sure that the camera is as centered as possible and keeping that uh, center of gravity and that weight mass right in the middle. And so you can feel the middle by using your fingers here right in the middle, and you should be able to get it to balance when it's balanced. So center of gravity is going to be key. Total weight is going to be really, really dependent um, on a lot of it. And so 2200 milliamp, you could get away with running it on the tail end. You can take the camera and shift it forward and make sure everything is still as centered as possible, the, the, the weight, and you can be able to definitely you know, get a lighter camera nicely flown. But if you're flying that big one, I would definitely go down to either a 2000 milliamp or an 1800 milliamp, and now we're gonna center mount it on the bottom. And again, if we want to fly something really light, like a BGH-1 with no battery or a naked black magic pocket, um, we could probably go all the way up to a 3300, slap it on the bottom, uh, center mount everything, and it's going to fly. It's not going to love it. Trust me, the 3300 is not going to be that impressive to fly because you're going to have so much more weight that you're wasting the energy. So you're really better finding a, a good balance with whatever batteries you can find. Um, at the end of the day, it's going to take some testing. There is no clear-cut answer. Um, there's no clear-cut flight time answer. We're right on that edge again, just like we are with Ducted Thick and some of these other um, you know, smaller platforms like Insider. Um, we're trying to do a lot here and keep it nice and tight. Um, so one last thing about the center mount or about balancing the weight and keeping things centered. On a Blackmagic Pocket, 4K, I would not try to fly a 6K on here, probably. You could, uh, but again, you're going to have to use such a small uh, battery that it's going to be tough. So the 4K, the problem with the mount is going to be that you have to get it further back because to use this left side over here, it's got to be further back, and it's got to be offset. So you have to offset the lens, and that's going to keep everything a little better balanced left to right. And so when you're doing this, you could also pull the battery. And if you pull the battery, you could possibly mount it a little more in the straight position and get it further forward. But the Black Magic Pocket is going to be somewhat problematic because of this. Um, as you can see, these antennas also kind of sit the back. So this is a situation where you may want to put the camera and kind of bend the antennas down around it. It's going to probably be, yeah, there you go. It's going to be okay. Um, it's not going to be the most ideal all the time. I don't know if you want to do this, you may want to go ahead and move your um, antennas back to the rear. If you're going to move them to the rear, though, like I said, remember, you're going to need that longer MMC MMCX to uh, RPFSA. So make sure that whatever you decide to mount on here is balanced left to right. The Black Magic Pocket, again, you could fly it this way. I just don't know that I recommend it. Um, try to again power it off of our power lead if you're going to um, and that goes for pretty much anything the lighter you keep this thing the more happy it's going to be the less la the, the more quiet it's going to be uh, it does get quite loud when you start approaching those heavier weights because those props are just you know spinning so um, I think that kind of covers everything um, if you do Decide that you want to center mount the bottom. Um, go ahead and put a battery pad, a uh, rubber battery pad. We will try to include those with all the builds. Uh, we don't want to put one on there just to kind of collect gunk of those. So uh, if for some reason we don't get you one, our apologies. Uh, you definitely just want to check that out and try to put something on there to keep the battery from slipping off. Um, other than that, I think that kind of covers everything. So if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Um, we're always here. So fly safe, fly smart. Just fly. Peace.